kingdoms of this world. They have become the kingdoms of our Lord and Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. The Lord reigns. The Lord
In Yeshua's name, amen. Now we are going to offer a scriptural prayer according to the word of God, Psalms 46. The re we are all going to read the first verse together. The reader will read the second verse, then the congregation, the third verse, and so it will go on. And then when we come to the last verse, verse 11, we all will read verse 11 together. All right? Amen. So, congregation, we are now reading together. Psalms 46. Let us read. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, reader, well, the congregation is reading the first verse, and the reader with the mic is reading the second verse, and then that's how we're going to go. Right? So let's begin again. Uh, congregation, we are all reading the first verse together. 2 3, Psalms 46. Therefore will not be fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right will do. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, the Lord. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he had made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. All together, the, the Lord of hosts is with, with us. The God, God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Amen and amen. Here ended our reading and our prayer for the nation of Israel. At this time, we are talking today about um, rising up on wings of eagles, right? But just before we do that, I wanted to share a little synopsis from our Torah portion this week, and that's from Noah, right? So we're going to read a little bit from our Torah parasha. If you can find Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, we're going to begin there. This week's portion is all about Noah being called by God to build the ark to bring the people into safety. Right? Genesis chapter 6, we are beginning from verse 9. Okay, now we're going to read, let's see, Genesis 6. This line, and we're going to read all the way. Alright, I'll tell you when we will stop. I want to go all the way to chapter 10. Alright, so the reader, when you have it, you can begin. You are going to read chapter 6, and then someone else will read chapter 7, and then someone else will read chapter 8, and then we will read someone else will read chapter 9. So you're reading from verse 6, chapter 6, verse 9. Amen. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, 
it was corrupt. For all the flesh and had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch within and without pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark. And in a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof. With lower second and third stories shall thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. From under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But for thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive, and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Amen. Amen. Chapter 7. Uh, do I have a reader? Nathan, would you like to read chapter 7 for us? Let's pass the mic. So here you have uh, the purpose of the Lord finding grace in Noah. Noah was a man who found what? Grace. God found grace in Noah. And the reason for that grace was because of his great assignment. Many of you, you have, God has found you faithful. And there is an unusual amount of grace on your life for purpose. Noah's purpose was to build an ark of board and wood and all of that in those times. Your purpose could very well be to build an ark, but it could be an ark of something that is different. It could be an ark of a food storage. It could be an ark of some sort of shelter, some place for uh, the homeless. In whatever your ark is, I want you to understand that in these last days, these last years, there is little time left for each and every one of us to build our acts and to fulfill our purpose with the grace that is placed on our lives. So, chapter 7 is all about the judgment of the flood. Nathan is going to read the entire portion of chapter 7. So that's from verse 1 all the way down to verse 24. So you're going to read 24 verses of scriptures for us. Genesis chapter 7, those online, you are welcome. We're just reading through our parish of scriptures before we go into preaching. Go ahead, Nathan. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I sent thou righteous before me in this generation. Of every three beasts thou shalt take three by seven, the male and the female. And of beast that has not cleaned two by, by two, the male and his female. 
have found also of the hair by seven, the males and the female, to keep seed alive unto the feast of the all the earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain unto the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made, I will destroy for all the face of the earth. And Noah did according all the Lord, the, the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife, and his son's wife with him, into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts and of beasts that not clean. And of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the wood. There were two in, and two unto Noah, into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And, in, and it came to pass seven days that the waters of flood were upon the wood. In the six hundred year of Noah's life, in the seventh month. The seventeenth day of the month, and the same day were all fountains of great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the self same day entered Noah, Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that crept upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl of his kind, and every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah, into the ark, two and two of all flesh within is the, the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of Ephraim all of flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in, and the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and rain. Up the ark it was, lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the pieces of all of the waters. And and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits up, upward did the waters prevail. And the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the in dry land died. And every living substance destroyed which was upon the face of the ground. Both man and cattle was creeping things and the fowls of, of the heaven and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth, and a hundred and fifty days. Amen. How many days? One hundred and fifty days. The water remained upon the earth. So it rained for forty days and forty nights, and that was enough rain to flood out an entire generation of the Nephilims, right? Who were the Nephilims? They were the descendants of Cain, uh, and Cain and descendants were with the fallen angels and all of that, and the Nephilims were born, and they were moving upon the earth, and they were very evil, very wicked. And this is why the Lord said, I have to wipe off these people off of planet Earth. Because this is not what I created. This is a demonic 
generation. This is a hybrid human. These are Nephilim creatures, very wicked, very evil, doing all sorts of wicked things. And the Lord found Noah, and he called Noah a righteous man. Out of every single other family on the planet at that time, it was Noah. He was a righteous man. And the Lord said, you, Noah, you are the one that I'm going to use to build this ark of safety. So Noah entered into the ark with his family, with his sons and all the daughter-in-laws, and clean and all those birds and all those animals, two of every day. Seven pairs, but male and female. Seven pairs of each. So can you imagine how many animals were in that boat, right? And the scriptures go on to tell us that there were three levels, right? The people were on, no one and his family were on top. The middle level was for the animals, and uh, the last level was for garbage and whatever else, food supplies and whatever else they have there. So there's a lot. That happened in the beginning of time. The Bible also tells us that Noah was a type and shadow of the Messiah because he was the one chosen to save the human race and the birds and the animals in his generation. How awesome is that? How wonderful is that? So now we are going on to verse chapter number 8. And chapter number 8 talks about the flood subsiding and um, does anyone know what bird he sent out to which bird the dove he sent out the dove no, the first bird was a raven that didn't work so the second bird he sent out was the dove and what did the dove bring back an olive leaf and the olive branch was kind of like an indication that the waters were receding and land was being seen again Right? And then he sent down the dove a third time, and the third time what happened, the dove didn't come back because the dove found dry land. So we're going to read chapter 8. Do I have a reader for chapter 8 talking about the flood? The mic is in the back there, so Uncle John can assist us to read chapter 8 of Genesis. Congregation Online, we are now reading chapter 8 of Genesis. Chapter 8 of Genesis. Genesis. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters a sweep. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of the heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually and after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month of the first day of the men were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the, until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the soul of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth, then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off, so no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet another seven days, and he sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, 
and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dry. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark thou, and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all the flesh, both of fowl, and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And they may be breathe abundantly into the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever that creepeth upon the earth, after their kind, went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on that altar, on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. 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 So we will stop there for now with the reading of the parasha. But after all of the tribulations and the trials that Noah went through with the flood and being shut up in the ark for the whole 40 days and 40 nights and then 150 days when all together they couldn't come out from that ark, eventually they were able to come out. And when he came out, what was the first thing he did? He built an altar unto the Lord. And he offered burnt sacrifices unto the Lord. And what does the Bible say the Lord smell? A sweet smelling sacrifice, a sweet savor. So therefore, therefore, the Lord can smell our offerings. Our offerings are, are a sweet perfume unto the Lord. It's a sweet savor, savor unto the Lord, right? And so Noah built uh, the Lord an altar. He offered sacrifice unto the Lord, and the Lord said. Never again will I destroy the earth by a flood. Never again. This time around, when the church is raptured and then the, the world enters into the seven year tribulation, what does the Bible say that you know will happen upon planet earth? How will things be destroyed? By what? Water? Fire. By fire. So this time around, God made a promise. He's not going to destroy the earth by water again, but it will be by fire, right? So this um, whole portion here is all about Noah finding grace, building the ark of safety, getting his family prepared for what was about to come, right? And he was saved. He was saved. So for you and for me in this hour and this, this dispensation, we just have a few more years left before... You know, before the whole thing happens where the Antichrist steps on the scene. So you and I have to be sure that we are found in the ark of safety and we are putting things in place and we are setting our houses in order so that we too can find grace in the Lord's sight and be lifted off a flat earth when the Lord comes to wrap the church, right? So I want your homework. This is your homework. I'm going to give you the notes here, right? I'm going to give you my notes concerning this parasha about Noah. And I want everyone to go home and read it. Read up the, this parasha about Noah and the, what he did for humanity, to save humanity. And the scriptures, it's long readings, but you have to read the scripture before you read the notes, okay? So go home and read up on it and understand more about it. Um, Katie, can you just come? Um Give right. each family one, that's not much here. It's two pages. So start with that. Okay. So each family can just photocopy um, their own. Just copy. 
Elias and and Joel.
write chapter 25. He did not forget to write your chapter 26 or chapter 27 or chapter 28. He finished the book. Amen. He finished the book. And yes. a matter of fact, he said, I know the end from the beginning. And I start from the end and then I work my way up to the beginning. He finished the books of your life before you were even born. Yes, sir. So God is saying to us today, take courage, take strength, have take strength in thy written word that these things I have spoken to you, that you will have peace in me. In the world, you're going to have tribulation. Because everybody has different mindsets, different ways, different behaviors. Nations are raging war against other nations over land and different things. There are all sorts of different things that will cause us to, to end up in tribulation. But God says, take comfort in me. Take comfort in me. Amen. In the world, you are going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I'm already Your strength and your song, you will always stand strong. 
you will always come out as the victorious one. You will always come out as the victor, the champion of the battle. You will always come out undefeated when the Lord remains your strength and your song. I don't know who online or may have been feeling weak in their spirit or in their soul, but this is what the Lord is saying. I am your strength and your song. And I will give you victory in the battle. As long as you keep me in the center of your heart, I am your strength and your song. Wow. Do you want to know what really strengthens you in times of testing? When you can find a song and sing it to the Lord. Even in the midst of what you're going through. And we, sometimes because of your love for the Lord, He just puts a song in your spirit that has never even been sung before. And that song just comes out from your spirit out of nowhere. And you begin to sing unto the Lord. When you sing unto the Lord, it creates an atmosphere of victory. Victory. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. You confuse devils when you begin to sing. So I want to encourage you to find a song, whatever song that speaks to your heart, and sing a new song today unto the Lord. Let those sweet words come out of your mouth and sing unto the Lord. Because the Lord is your strength and your song, and He is your salvation. Proverbs 18 and 10 tells us, Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous do what? Run into it and are what? Saved. Just by speaking his name, you enter into the place of safety. The name of God alone. But the name of the Lord carries power. The name of the Lord carries the victory. The name of the Lord gives you confidence in God. The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run into it and they are safe. When you are facing situations and circumstances, always run into the Lord. Run to the Lord. Run to his presence. Run to his altar. Run to your place of prayer and surrender it all. And I can guarantee you that the Lord will meet you there. He will meet you at that altar. He will meet you at the place of prayer. He will come and he will comfort you because he is our comforter. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 17. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 17. You can find it. You have your Bible. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 17. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Hey. Thank you, Lord. I'm giving you the keys of the written word today. Sometimes you can forget what the preacher has preached. Sometimes you can forget what a person has said. But the written word, it abides forever. The written word, it's a double-edged sword. The written word will cause you to have the victory. It's the written 
word of God. I'm giving you keys. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 17. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. So that I might, so that the message might be preached fully through me. And all the Gentiles might hear that I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Yes. Our trials and our tribulations is never really for ourselves. It is so that when we are delivered and we overcome, we can tell our testimonies. Or we can tell a portion of our story to encourage others. So this is what I am telling you today. In the midst of situations and circumstances, the Lord comes through and he strengthens us. He strengthens us. He strengthens us. He strengthens our faith. That our faith will not fail. That we will not get weary at fighting or, or walking along our journeys of healing. That we will not fall in the midst of war. But that we will continue going forward because we know on the other side there is victory waiting for us. Our testimony is on the other side. Your business is on the other side of your trial. Your promotion and elevation is on the other side. You got to keep going forward. The Lord, it was the Lord that stood with me and strengthened me. Otherwise, I would have fainted. Have you ever been in a situation where had it not been for the Lord strengthening you, you would have fainted? You would have literally fainted. You might have tripped off, done something unorthodox. Had it not been for the Lord. The Lord saves us time and time again from doing wrong things, crazy things, tripping off. Had it not been for the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have so much to thank God for. He's strengthens our inner man to keep us in our right mind. Hallelujah. Have you ever come to the edge of a bridge and you just feel like that's it? That is it. Today, 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 I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what my flesh is telling me to do. I'm going to mash up this whole place. Amen. And then out of nowhere, the angel of the Lord comes and says, who said that? Who's, who's talking here? The angel of the Lord. Yes. Has that ever happened to you when you hear that voice? Yes. A still small voice. It's a really tiny, tiny voice, right? A still small voice comes and says, My sister, who yourself? Don't get on like that. That's not right. Don't do that. And you look around and you say, Who said that boy? Who's talking here with me? <laughs> Sometimes you feel it going mad. It is the angel of the Lord coming to strengthen us. Coming to keep us from acting out of context. Acting in our flesh. I tell you, the flesh, if you give the flesh a chance, that flesh will make you do all kinds of things. And say all kinds of things. And behave all kinds of ways. That flesh well and really the Bible says the flesh is warring against the spirit every day. Every day it's a battle. Every day it's, it's, a, it's a contention. You want to serve God in spirit and in truth, but the flesh is warring against your spirit because that devil knows if you overcome this one, you're going to your next level. Your life will advance. Your business will advance. Your money will increase. Your house will advance. Family will advance. Everything advance. So that devil will always try to stir up trouble. So you've got to be on guard for that. And understand today that God is strengthening us. So that we will stand strong. In the midst of battle. In the midst of war. In the midst of tribulation. We're going to stand strong. You have to make up your mind to do that. You have to make up your mind to listen to that still small voice that speaks and tells you 
what is the right thing to do by times. Sometimes you don't want to do what is the right thing because, you know, we just want to please our mind, but you have to do it God's way. God will strengthen you. God will help you. The Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached. Many of you have great callings on your life. And God wants to use your life. He wants to use your testimony. He wants, he wants to use you in certain ways and certain capacities to do the work of the Lord. And the enemy is trying all how to steal testimonies. He's trying to steal our testimonies. So you, got, you cannot allow him to steal your testimony. Because your testimony must be proclaimed. Your message must be preached. Your voice matters. And your voice must be heard. Of what you went through and what you overcame in life. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Final portion of scripture. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 to 31. Let's all find out if you can find that. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 to 31. We'll all read together on the reader has it. Isaiah 40, all the mic is down on the back. Who's the reader on the back? Oh, okay. Okay, so we're getting it. Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. Yeah, yeah. No, it's mine. That's it. Okay, he'll sort it out. All right, I'm going to read that first as soon as he gets that sorted out. Just connect it up. Isaiah 40, verse 29 to 31. This is such a powerful portion of scripture. That's mine. You have mine. I know. Yeah, yeah. You have that mic? Pass it down. This is, pass it down. Isaiah 40, 29, 31. Those of you online, you can put it up. Okay. Finish. 
on living. Purpose in your mind that you're going to keep on living. Purpose in your heart from today. If you stop taking your supplements, you're going to start back taking your supplements. If you stop taking care of your skin, you're going to start back taking care of your skin. If you stop going to do pedicures, you're going to get back into your pedicures. <laughs> Because God needs you equipped for this last leg of the journey. He needs you equipped. He needs you focused. He needs you strong. He needs you committed. He needs you a purpose. He needs you to have single vision. And he needs you to be on duty for this last leg of the journey. The, but there's a, a saying, a wise person that studied the eagle said that the eagle flies with single vision. It is, it is a bird that flies with single vision. When it's flying, it is flying straight ahead. No diversion. No, no wondering if I should go left. It, it flies straight on. Single vision. Single vision. So in this last leg of the journey, I know I know that the devil was trying to wear all the saints. I know it. I know that I'm a global leader, leading a global ministry of all people. You don't think I know that? I know that. But he has his work to do, and you have your work to do. So I'm not going to let him stop me from doing what I have to do. I'm on the final leg. You're on the final leg. We're on the whole well. We have to finish it well. So I want you to keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Right where you are, we're going to sing the song again. I'm going to please put the song in your heart. And because everyone is going to sing. Right where you are. We're all going to sing to the Lord. And I want you to keep this song in your heart. You're leaving here with this song.
has your testimony. Your testimony is, look what the Lord has done. Yeshua will shine. 
crossover into a new season and she will take the business blessing to you. I impart blessings to Brittany. I impart blessings to Abdiel. I decree and declare the joy of the Lord. Rest upon you and your entire household. Yes, Lord. The blessing of the Lord be imparted to you this day. Yes, Strength for your new journey. Amen. Comes now. Amen. In Yeshua's name. You will not be a weak Christian. You will not be shaky. But you will be planted by the rivers of living waters. Unmovable, unshakable. I release that strength to you now. I decree on your life. Conflict management skills. Amen. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. You will not get all confused. with dealing with situations. Yes, Lord. But you will be able to with the challenges of life with a sober mind. Not moving, not shaking, not creating all sorts of things, not making assumptions. I speak that blessing over you. Amen. In the midst of conflict, you will steady, 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 steady and focused you will be. And you will come out on top of your enemy. I see the Lord lifting you up above your enemies. The Lord is lifting you up above your enemies. The Lord is giving you divine strategies to win battles. Receive divine strategies to win battles in this season. Receive that grace right now. Grace comes. Grace comes. Grace comes. Grace comes. Strength comes. Strength comes. Healing in your mind. Healing in your soul. Healing in your body. Divine healing comes now according to Isaiah 53 and 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Receive that healing on your life. Yes, All over your body right now, the Spirit of the Lord is healing. 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 Lord is healing. Receive your healing right now. In Yeshua's name. Do the, the do 
the prayer of blessing over the offering. Your um, prayer of blessings. Who has the book? All right, the Dr. John has it come forward. Everyone hold your envelopes.